in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed was standing up a building like an elevated like a story building and i saw an endless sea of people in that vision it was a whole generation in that vision and the ones in front of me as the the the, the picture kept zooming they began to cry and i remember very clearly they said there's no food and there's no water and then i said who is the cause and they all pointed in unison unanimously I said, why would I do that? No food and no water. And he says, who is the cause? And they pointed to me. And I said, no, I would not do that. Then I had an assignment to deliver those people. But I was afraid because in that vision, it looked like some people had chased me into that closet. But I made up my mind that I was going to go out all the same. I said, if I perish like Esther, I perish. As soon as I opened the door, I met this giant gray bearded man that i know now is a representation of the holy spirit and he stretched his hands and i stretched back my tiny hands and placed it on him and he said i will walk with you and then we began to move moving from one building to the other on our way down that's the vision number one and you know for a long time when you see that you would think it's just spiritual food and spiritual water alone but i believe that it is all encompassing whatever food represents food represents the basis for nourishment and sufficiency hallelujah so when i teach topics like this i'm not teaching as an advisor there is an anointing and a mantle that came are we together to teach what i am teaching number two in that vision i was standing ready to serve god's people and there was a machine you know very strangely the machine was mixing bread with honey and my assignment was to just cut a piece and serve the people automatically it was not me mixing it the machine you know how you put jam or blue band in between the bread it was doing it on its own and that machine you could not even see the end of it my assignment was just to stand it would churn out bread mixed with honey dripping honey from the bread it was dripping to the ground and people would taste of it and run and join the queue again i know i saw that happen many times and there was no such thing like you've been here before don't come again people would eat and run and they were calling their loved ones and saying come and the queue started elongating elongating and people were taking the bread and honey some will run back and stand on the queue others will have their loved ones come to join bread and honey listen ladies and gentlemen there are people who teach finances because of their passion to release people from lack and want and poverty and that is wonderful there are people who teach finances because they had an opportunity to study along the lines of finances and they are bringing their value and serving the body of christ or serving you know society generally and that is profitable there are others who have become professionals by reason of their exposure to you know financial institutions and they feel that they have something to say but there are people who have been mandated with a mantle upon their head are we together now and god has given them an assignment among the many other things is to open the eyes of people so that they will see when you sit under this anointing and under those kinds of people i guarantee you regardless your experience if your heart is opened you will watch the wonder walking god lift you out of financial shame 
and reproach and may this be that night for you in the name of Jesus I have watched with sadness the limiting effect of being poor or financially incapacitated I know it like you know that it has affected preachers it has affected families listen carefully it has affected ministries it has affected nations it has affected government finance is one of the number one sponsors for compromise of character many people today who otherwise would have been worthy representations models for generations they survived every other temptation but they could not stand finances are we together now judas iscariot survived every other thing but when it came to the money issue he felt like a pack of cards. in fact one of the principal areas that would have brought embarrassment to the ministry of jesus was the issue of finances he was teaching doing the things that he was doing and the tribute collectors came and they began to embarrass him you claim to be a teacher of righteousness but you are owing the government you have not been able to pay your tax and that was a statement that would indict and embarrass him and put a stain upon his ministry. And Jesus did something immediately to remedy that situation. Hallelujah. Among the many things that we were given as far as redemption is concerned is access to the blessing. And the blessing of the Lord translates to all kinds of good things, including freedom and deliverance from poverty this poverty thing is a very serious thing because while we have those who talk about it like an obsession very few have been able to profess solution and we have those who have avoided it and done so to their detriment so we always have two groups of people when it has to do with the subject of poverty and finance. We have those who are overly obsessed. It looks like everything in their lives, everything as far as the communication of teachings and sermons is centered around money, 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 and, and that's the end of it. Then we have those who shy away from it using all kinds of religious guys and just say it does not matter. God will find a way of sorting you. You just love God. And many Many have done that for many years and now are only left with tears and shame let God be true and all men liars I'm saying it again I made a covenant with God that I will never raise a people who are just spiritually vibrant your spiritual vibrancy is my number one assignment but not my only assignment according to Genesis 17 and verse 6 this is a word that I have received in my spirit for you it says and I will make thee exceeding fruitful and I will make nations of thee it says and kings shall come out of thee there is no room for weakness and mediocrity by the way let me tell you you can prosper and serve God with the dignity of kingdom integrity if you fall by the wayside in serving God it is not the presence or absence of money it is something about the condition of your heart are we learning already now let's start very quickly it's a prophetic service we have a proper series that I'm going to be taking and we'll have the time it's a three-part series we'll deal with it extensively across boards but tonight I just want to open us up to a few things and respond to that burden that God has put in my heart let's define a few things because you will be surprised how many believers are failing financially simply because they do not even understand what they are dealing with the average believer has not paid attention to this subject are we together now I want to define five terminologies very quickly and please I want you to write both in your heart and then on your notes number one let's define prosperity what exactly is prosperity it's a word that seems to carry pungency for many in the body of Christ once they hear the word prosperity they say don't don't bring me as part of that word and for others that looks like the only thing they see in the Bible prosperity what exactly is prosperity the word prosper means to do well simple in the simplest expression the word prosper please write it down it means to do well the word prosper means to excel 
So prosperity in its, in, its, um, in its purest definition has nothing to do with money. Hallelujah. When I was teaching on the power to get wealth, you can get the teaching and listen to it. I taught you, if you recall, that in the kingdom, there are five levels of prosperity. Are we still together? And that when the believer approaches the subject of prosperity, you do not approach it like one who is an unbeliever. There are five levels of prosperity and God expects and insists that you prosper in all five areas for you to truly be prosperous the kingdom's way. Number one, very quickly, in order of priority is your spiritual prosperity. I'm just doing a recap to guide our understanding again. Number two, mental prosperity. Number three, bodily prosperity, your health and vitality. Number four, financial prosperity. Now, your financial resources. And then number five, relational prosperity. These are the five areas that the believer must prosper in. If you do not prosper in all five areas, based on the kingdom's definition of prosperity, you are not prosperous. Let me repeat again. Spiritual prosperity the health of your spirit man, your passion and your drive towards God, the health of your prayer life, your word study life, your passion for the things of God. Number two, mental prosperity. Your mind properly developed and deployed. Are we together now? Number three, your health and wellness. I don't need to tell you again that no matter how wealthy you are in terms of finance, if something happens to your body, all of that will remain like ashes. If you die, your money does not go with you. You are buried naked and if, you, if they cloth you, all those clothes would turn to ashes and dust eventually and all that will be left at the bones of whoever. No name. Doesn't matter. Are we together now? then financial prosperity, then finally, relational prosperity. So in the kingdom, you are only said to be prosperous if we can see captured in your life these five dimensions of prosperity. Let's define the next terminology very quickly. Riches. Please write that word down. What does the Bible refer to as riches? Hallelujah. Please write. Riches simply means abundant financial resources. Riches, abundant financial resources. Abundant financial resources. Now, in ancient times, they didn't use money like we use. So whatever it is that represented money for them in those days, if you had abundance of it, you were believed to be rich whether it was cattle whether it was um, gold whether it was whatever it is riches in our world now will be defined as abundant financial resources number three wealth this is a very key definition there is a big difference between wealth and riches while riches is concerned with abundant resources wealth has to do with the systems that guarantee the continuity of those resources there is a big difference between riches and wealth let me define wealth for you now please write wealth is abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee replenishing the difference between a rich person and a wealthy person is one person has abundant financial resources that can come through whatever means, including inheritance. But a wealthy person has financial abundant resources and has in place systems that guarantee replenishing. So for a wealthy person, there is a way to perpetuate wealth. Are we learning now? So when we say you are rich, it means whether by inheritance or by whatever means Godly, of course, we are speaking as believers. You have access, even if it's for a short time, to financial resources. But when we talk about a wealthy person, don't forget, you have abundance of financial resources alongside systems that are put in place. So you can see by this definition that there might be many people who are rich, 
but truly very few people who are wealthy this explains the whole balloon success where people are up today down tomorrow because most times in our world we interpret wealth wrongly once you have abundance of financial resources whether it came by corruption whether it came by stealing whether it came by fraud we just believe that you are wealthy no wealth has to do with the presence of abundant financial resources plus the systems that guarantee continuity are we together the fourth definition very quickly poverty I know you don't want to write it but just write poverty <laughs> someone is already saying god forbid it's not with my hand out right we are defining poverty what exactly is poverty are you ready poverty refers to the absence the absence of financial resources the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity the absence of financial resources number one then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity this is the definition of poverty so if your definition of poverty is only limited to the absence of money or financial resources you did not define it well it is both the absence of the substance finance and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that is required to be productive is someone learning already one last time that poverty refers to the absence of financial resources and then the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity let's define lack you'll be surprised now to know that there is a difference between lack and poverty the same way there is a difference between riches and wealth now lack talks of insufficiency lack talks of insufficiency inadequate resources to meet your needs especially when required hallelujah someone in lack may not necessarily be poor the problem of someone in lack is not the absence of financial resources it is that when you suffer from lack you almost always do not have the financial resources when needed it may eventually come but at the point where it is needed it is almost not there you see that many people are not poor but many people are in lack and i taught you when i was teaching the power to get wealth that one of the advantages listen carefully the advantages of uh, one of the advantages of financial um prosperity or abundant resources is that it is available when needed if it is not available to solve the problem then it is of no use are we together say for instance you need x amount of naira or dollars to solve a medical situation that is life-threatening say for instance you need just for let's say a million naira to solve a medical situation that that person may die without it and now you are not a poor person at one point or the other money comes but at the point where it is needed it is not there no matter how you convince yourself you are in luck hallelujah if the person dies and hundred million comes in next week you are still in luck you see that the goal is not to be in lack the goal is to have supplies that provide for sufficiency when needed when needed the person who has 500 naira that always appears at the point of the need will be more effective than someone who is anticipating a hundred million and may wait 10 20 years you you can see people who can beg and suffer and cry and say please someone help me but when you trace their overall financial system there may be some money hanging somewhere that they are still trying to walk around i'm telling you that if at the point of need the resources to meet that need is not there it is called lack hmm. hallelujah 
so prosperity to do well riches to have abundant financial resources wealth to have riches plus the systems that perpetuate it and allow for continuity poverty the absence of financial resources and the absence of the knowledge and the intelligence that guarantees productivity and then for lack we say is insufficiency in one word that means when you suffer lack you almost are never able to meet your needs when required this is very very powerful hallelujah but since my focus is on poverty tonight i like us to go straight to the point what are the factors responsible for poverty please write because the bible says to preach deliverance to the poor what are the factors what are the factors responsible for poverty for many people especially in the body of christ the moment the subject of poverty comes it is just to pray against it or pray against spirits and so on and so forth and while that is important it is important for us or more important to really examine and there are seven factors that i wrote here you will be surprised seven factors anybody who lives with these factors at work in their lives must be poor no matter who you are hallelujah are we blessed and anybody who gets free from these seven factors must be wealthy it has not there's no sentiments please try to believe what i'm telling you hallelujah so whilst you are listening to this some of you in your mind you will be looking at your life introspectively you will be looking at your families and wonder so my sincere father my sincere mother my sincere lineage as sincere as they are this is what was responsible for the poverty most times people just desire to you know manifest the blessings to prosper and superstitiously they just hope that one day by a way i cannot explain i will suddenly stumble into wealth no it is deception and unfortunately even though respectfully so men of god sometimes we are promoters of these kinds of wrong ideologies so people continue to hope on nothing holding shadows and after many years of frustration they succumb to the temptations of compromise and so on and so forth to preach deliverance to the captives are you ready for this seven please do not forget this for as long as you are alive in the name of jesus christ the factors responsible for poverty. This is true for Abuja. This is true for Lagos, true for Nigeria, true for any part of Africa, true for America, Europe, wherever. These are universal factors. Number one, what is the first reason, the first factor that is responsible for poverty? My emphasis is the poverty of the saints, believers in Christ. In as much as this message is relevant and cuts across religion, culture, my emphasis in this service tonight is to help make a contribution that brings believers for God's sake out of this demon, this captivity called poverty. Number one, ignorance or incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. This is the first reason for poverty in the body of christ please write it and pay attention ignorance or incomplete knowledge please if you're writing underline ignorance and underline incomplete knowledge ignorance or incomplete knowledge of god's financial system ignorance or incomplete knowledge of god's financial system this is the first reason why believers even though they have come into christ are not able to manifest the blessing of the kingdom that we claim to have i have preached again and again against ignorance that ignorance is dangerous and then to my mind equally dangerous is incomplete knowledge when people have incomplete knowledge the equations will always not add up because incomplete knowledge is the sponsor of imbalance hallelujah when your knowledge is not holistic as touching a subject you will find yourself doing the best you know with what you know 
but what you know may not be enough to give you what you desire ignorance and incomplete knowledge i give you an instance when you sample an average believer in the body of christ and ask the person what does it take to be blessed for someone he will say anointing for another person he will say seed for another person he will say tight for another person you say forget about that tight it's a scam for someone else is going to say work hard that's the key hmm. hallelujah for someone else you say do business for someone else you say meet a financial counselor all of these seem to be pieces of the truth but having a piece of the truth may not be enough to produce that result so ignorance or incomplete knowledge ask a man of God respectfully speaking sir how do you raise money for ministry and you will hear all kinds of things the good the bad and the ugly sincerely come and ask members to give you money somebody will say bring in someone who will help you raise the money another person will say identify all the rich people and wear them until preach that scripture cry yet saying you know thus said the Lord <laughs> through prosperity and so on and so forth and then of course to the more extremes like manipulation and witchcraft and all kinds of things ask an average unbeliever in Nigeria what is the easiest way to make money money ritual it's as simple as that they will answer you no matter how dull they are they will answer you immediately and say listen if all else fail just find a goat or a child or a human being be on your way to any place you know where they can conjure all kinds of things and if you think this message is not important wait until the gates of poverty press at you you will be surprised at the level and the shades of compromises that you'll be involved with this is true for preachers this is true for parents this is true for families this is true for leaders true for organizations especially churches right from covid because of what happened globally you know there seems to have been a decline and i submit to you that many churches many individuals many organizations have gone through seasons of financial strain and for many they have not recovered till now ignorance or incomplete knowledge of god's financial system there are two reasons why jesus wept in the bible the first is found in John 11:35, when he stood at the grave of Lazarus. The Bible says Jesus wept. And the next verse would say that when they saw him weep, they said, oh, how he loved him. So he wept because of his compassion for John. The second reason why Jesus wept in the Bible is found in Luke chapter 19 from verse 41 and 42. He wept because of the ignorance of the people. The Bible says when he was come near, he beheld the city and wept over it, saying, 42, If thou hast known, even thou at least in this thy day, the things which belong to your peace, it says, but now they are hid from your eyes. So Jesus wept when he saw people like sheep without a shepherd. And he knew that these people would continue to wallow in darkness. Ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. Are we ready for the second? Number two. The second reason why men and especially the saints... Are in financial captivity is I wrote here the absence of value that is needed and useful please write that down the absence of value that is needed and useful not just the absence of value the absence of value that is needed and useful there is a clamor for value in the body of Christ and that is wonderful except that you need to understand that the value you present must be needed and useful if the value is not needed and useful most likely you will still remain poor even though valuable so the narrative before now is that once you are valuable there seems to be a guarantee that you will prosper i submit to you by wisdom honesty and the word that that is not accurate there are many valuable people who are poor and sadly may remain so do you know why because the world around them does not need the value that they are providing 
value must coincide with the law of exchange for reward to happen that means no matter what you are carrying if i do not need what you are carrying for instance if you come to me and you say apostle i want to sell for you baby serilac for me now it's valuable but not valuable for me are we together and if i am your only client get ready to be poor you, 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 you get what I'm saying now. Now, that does not mean that baby product is wrong. Simply because you are now surrounded by an individual who does not need what you're carrying. So there are many people who just believe that I am valuable. Unfortunately, their region, their, their, their clientele does not need the value that they are providing. If you are a professional typist, for instance, chances are excellent that by now, you may be tending towards poverty if that is the only value you have to offer why because time has shifted people and made your value not needed hallelujah if your only value is to teach people basic computer appreciation chances are excellent you are going to be poor because even people in the village now with an android device they have learned the things people used to queue in business centers to learn am i am i right on that the second reason why the saints are poor is that in bringing value to the table, I'm buttressing on point two, they do not pay attention to those around them. That means there is no intelligent problem analysis. They just come up with any value and hope that people, whether they need it or not, will patronize them. Are we together? That means if your value is not solving any direct problem that suits the context of your civilization, you are going to be poor. It's as simple as that. Number three, is someone learning? The third reason why God's people especially are in financial captivity is lack of productivity and excellence. Please write it down. I didn't give you a scripture reference for number two you may want to quickly write this down matthew 25 from verse 24 to 27 there is the reference remember the three people talents he gave one five he gave one um two he gave one one but the other one was called wicked and unprofitable hallelujah so number three lack of productivity and excellence this is a very important one because this even affects people who are valuable lack of productivity do you know what productivity is please look up let me define for you in simple terms what productivity is productivity is the ability to translate your value into products and services are we together that are packaged and served to a targeted consumer base with excellence that is productivity you are not productive if you are valuable you are not productive if you have refined your value until your value is packaged into products and services that are served with excellence to a targeted consumer base if that does not happen you are not productive you may be valuable but not productive the third reason why believers are poor is lack of productivity and excellence. In Daniel chapter 5, let's read 12 to 14. Daniel chapter 5. The Bible speaking about this gentleman called Daniel. It says, for as, an, as much as an excellent spirit and knowledge and understanding, interpreting of dreams, showing of hard sentences, dissolving of doubts were found in the same Daniel whom the king named Belshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will show the interpretation. This is not just a man. I hope you know that there were many dreamers, but there was something about this, this gentleman called Daniel. He added excellence to his value. The Bible says, and then was Daniel brought up before the king. Follow carefully now. And the king spake and said, Daniel, art thou that Daniel? which art of the children of captivity of Judah, whom the king my father brought out of Jerry 14. I have even heard of thee, 
that the spirit of the gods is in thee and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you now i don't have the time to read further i would have shown you that it took more than the ability to interpret the dream for the king to hear daniel his composure his understanding protocol he kept quiet and allowed the king to speak and when it was time he said oh king i respect you but please let your gift be kept he told the king my value is greater than your gift don't bait me with gifts have your reward to yourself nevertheless i will interpret it i am more concerned with problems than money and the rewards he later got was greater than what the king gave him because if he had collected this that's what most people would do so it takes more than being valuable you need to be excellent an excellence would demand rejecting certain temporary rewards to get other nobler and superior rewards are we together for instance when someone is valuable and decides to steal from his master let's say a thousand dollars five thousand dollars and run away whereas that man planned to give him an estate or to make him a shareholder of his company you see the kind of foolishness that many people do and he will run away and someone else will steal what he stole so you see it's two zero now he's back to square zero and he will be angry that they stole what he stole lack of productivity and excellence i submit to you that church people need to be mentored to understand the value of excellence are we together now compromise on quality is prevalent especially among believers you give believers projects to handle and you will see all shades of compromises and we will cover everything in the name of jesus and using the guise of similarity of faith whether you give them jobs you give them contracts most believers do not want to bend over backward to deliver with excellence and then those who are in positions of authority and influence who are believers go through all kinds of pressure why would you not give your fellow believer this road? Why would you not give him this contract? Why would you not give him this one? And at the end of it, you will find out that it's the same believers that keep causing pain for so many people because of their lack of, their lack of uh, this thing. I've had that kind of experience myself where you can trust people in the name of believers and say, okay, let me support you with this, handle this project. And it, it is a total mess that comes back. Mess with an entitlement mentality on top. Are we together now? And then sometimes you are pushed to have to make do with unbelievers because the, their, their basis for for relating with you is purely contractual and they know that if they compromise they have themselves to blame so they will give the highest level of excellence there is someone learning the absence you see believers produce something and they cannot go and package it well they will wrap it in one polythene and just write maybe jesus is lord on it now i'm not saying that is wrong and I'm not saying the statement, but it's, it's a mockery. The name you are putting there should not carry that kind of packaging. And sometimes it costs next to nothing. It's just ignorance. Because most times we are very proud. We cannot bend over backwards to ask, how can I make this happen? We fall in the guise of, I have the Holy Spirit. The unbelievers don't have the Holy Spirit. But they have a mind that is working. And when it was time for Moses to have knowledge, God sent him to Egypt for knowledge. Even though Moses had a covenant with God, when it had to do with power and results and anointing, he didn't need Egypt. But when it had to do with the wisdom to understand the cosmos, the same thing happened to Joseph. Do you notice that when God wants to give his people secular enlightenment, he will always send them to Egypt? Are you learning now? Many believers are not excellent someone for instance will have a store or a shop and sit down and be claiming in the name of jesus i will be the leading store you wake up by 10 o'clock and someone will be kind enough to call you and say our fellowship needs 30 cans of malt i say look I'm, I'm tired you drag yourself as a man as if you are pregnant and open the shop and then now argue and say i don't have change come back later on and by five o'clock you change and say i am going to church it's a flimsy reason flimsy excuse you cannot hire an apprentice because you want all the profit to yourself and yet there is somebody 
all round he has designed a system 24 hours is available he put Christian Muslims eight is all together so when it's time for prayer the other one is there making sure it happens if it's time for say productivity please shout it say excellence we are very small-minded as believers and we think it does not matter because we compare ourselves from our little backgrounds and we just say oh i'm making this i'm making that oh i want to go into fishery i want to go into fish business and you just leave your fish in the bucket and keep calling people to come and buy it how many will will kings come will i come and reach out into a bucket or a, 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 you know Are we learning? Number four. What is the fourth key? The absence of strategic relationships. Please start that one. That is the major reason for the poverty of many. I submit to you. If I am to draw a pie chart and represent all these points, this one will take over 65 percent this one the reason why people are poor listen there are three things if you don't have you will remain perpetually poor number one value if you don't have value have relationships if you don't have relationships have character if you don't have these three things you have signed a contract with poverty forever yes sir if you lack value you lack strategic relationships you lack character then you are forget about the blessing of the lord being made manifest in your life so number four right please very quickly the absence of strategic relationships in john chapter 5 popular scripture reading from verse 1 to 7 verse let's look at 7 for emphasis the the man at bethesda jesus asked the man how come you have been so long here? Do you want to be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. That is my issue. Not I have no strength. At least among all the important folks, I seem to be better than others. But the man who will give me the leverage and his one year or one day translated to 38 years of stagnation because there was no man. He did not say I have no skill. He did not say, I have no strength. He most likely was better than somebody. Do you know what it means for one day to become 38 years? And the simple reason is I have no man. I have no man. There was a crippled man who's had relationships and they came to Jesus' crusade insisting that that man will be healed. And when they found out that there was a crowd, they said, listen, we are not going back with this, our friend. He may not have the power to reach out to Jesus. He may not have the energy to shout, have mercy on me. But he had relationships and they tore the zinc. In other words, we would discuss with the owner of this venue later on. But as far as this man is concerned, not for our sake, they uncovered the roof, the Bible says. And Jesus called it fate. Not carelessness, not wickedness. He called it fate. That means relationships can enhance your fate. strategic relationships i submit to you ladies and gentlemen this is where unbelievers cheat believers hands down because we have not learned the value and the excellency of strategic relationship the average believer will not pay attention to invest in quality destiny defining relationships you know why because we we feel that we are immune with factors and systems of advantage like favor, like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes you hear us brag and say, I don't need any man. If you are saying that to describe the sovereign power of God, you are right. But if you are saying that to mean that on earth here, you do not need anybody, go and think again. That God had to send an angel to come and carefully discuss with a woman to make her womb available for Jesus to arrive. 
Look at all the men that played strategic roles in his life. From the prophets, Simeon the prophet, Anna the prophetess, Simon of Cyrene, Joseph of Arimathea, the owner of the donkey that he, 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 he carried for triumphant entry. How could Jesus do without men? As far as he was upon the earth, he needed men. As God, he may not need men, but as a man, he needed men. Let me remind you again that I have taught you that all blessings come from God through men to men. Please say it after me. All blessings come from God through men to men. If God says yes, and on the earth men say no, your yes will remain in the realm of the spirit. I guarantee you. There are people today who may not have as much value. When you look at the level of the financial blessing in their lives, it looks unfair because realizing that they may not have so much value, they turn to relationships and they master the art of bringing strategic relationships. There is a difference between strategic and parasitic relationships. I'm talking about strategic relationships. Hallelujah. If someone comes to unduly oppress you, you do not know anybody in the police force who can help you. If someone comes to speak, to you, you do not know any, no, it's wrong, it's dangerous. It can keep any believer poor. Respectfully speaking, there are men and women of God today, there are business people, very easy things cannot be done. You want to register a company and there is no lawyer that believes in you who can say i love you so much you just bring what is needed my own part as a reward i leave it because you did not pay attention building relationships relationships are not gifts they are investments waiting for people to just like you for nothing is a waste of time you've heard me say it here unbelievers a man who is a billionaire will leave america to nigeria to come and celebrate a rich man's two-year-old son let's be honest is the two-year-old son his mate and you see him playing with a baby baby how are you and the baby is not even saying anything and because he was represented there in that birthday celebration they will discuss something that will translate to millions and billions of dollars while believers are there fasting calling the man's name on the ground writing it on paper and say except it's not my god you must give me this job someone has left and is there represented no 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 shouting carelessly let me say this listen 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 please make sure as you listen to me you behave yourself because sometimes when we get excited we can say all kinds of things this is a house of discipline so celebrate the word but don't start shouting tell them or misbehave please let me say this as a disclaimer we are very disciplined people in the name of Jesus is someone learning relationships I have learned and I have seen in my life that who hates you does not matter but ladies and gentlemen, in this wicked world, who loves you? Who loves you matters all. Oh. Esther, you will remain in Shushan until you have an uncle that can present you to the king. But if the king loves you, you can become queen immediately. Joseph, you can remain in the prison even though you have the ability to interpret dreams. If the king does not love you, you remain a prisoner there. We live in an arrogant world that trivializes men. What is there? I have God. I don't need any man. That is true. There is, a, there is a place for that when you are describing the sovereignty of God. But when you are dealing with the dynamics of the cosmos, please do not listen to that wrong teaching that you do not need men. Let me tell you, men are so important huh, that there are gatekeepers who even though they are not believers, you cannot cast them. There are men that are uncastable. If God wants you to pass through that gate, he will grant them favor with you. But as far as they are concerned, praying them away is a waste of time. When a man's ways pleases the Lord, is that in your Bible? He makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. There are some people, if they are not at peace with you, you will go to heaven, but you will suffer on this earth. 
is the truth. This is what some of our loved ones did not know. This is what some of our great people, as I'm talking to you now, some of you came from families that, that were mad by poverty. I am showing you that these were the rules that our loved ones broke. When other people were building relationships, they were there gossiping and ignoring people and saying, how can this small boy be rich? Instead of you to be close to him because he can help you. Now, the small boy is the one who can pay for your medical bills. And unfortunately, every old person around you does not have money. What do you now do? Respectfully, there are men and women of God who have insulted members. And shouted at people if you are rich you carry all your money and they insult them whereas there's building project coming whereas there are all kinds of things coming then when it is now the time you say if you are if you have money in this church and you are not giving and the people say no 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 you insulted us I go you insult me and insult everything I have so as I go I go with everything I have relationships you come to church you ignore the person sitting at your left and right they say turn to your neighbor you are frowning simply because you do not even know whether that person is the answer to your tomorrow's prayer, not even today. You see, let me tell you the truth. Please look up. We live in a world where we like glitz and glamour. Once you see someone sit close to you, and there's nothing wrong, everybody has their, their, you know, the way they see life. But some of the greatest gifts and the greatest helpers will come in packages that you will need your spirit man to help you discern someone may be seated close to you he may not have money but he's the one who works for the one you are looking for and let me tell you Nigerians we know this the person who is an aid of a wealthy man is more is more um, in a position of honor and opportunity than even some of the directors in the company because that is the one who will serve him tea that is the one who will serve him bread and he can smuggle your issue to his ears quickly Whereas somebody is still saying, well, minuted, they sign it there and throw it away and pray that the wind, evil wind does not push it from that table to the trash. As funny as what I'm saying is, there are many of us right now, the answer to your prayer is what you are hearing. You have ignored many people. Nobody is worth your commitment. We have this sense of self-sufficiency. No, it does not matter. You are making a mistake. A big mistake I'm not teaching human worship please don't get me wrong there are people because of the abundance and because of the way they have suffered they will want to subjugate people and turn them to slaves please this is not what I'm teaching but I am telling you that in the lifting of men even financially men have a role to play I've asked you this question many times let me ask you one more time think don't talk is there someone in your life right now who you can call for help and the person will help you without thinking twice just think is there someone right now as you are watching me let's assume for instance that you needed let me use a realistic figure maybe two hundred thousand five hundred thousand a million naira is there someone in your life that has been helped by God who can say for your sake I'm on my way to your house if there is none, I guarantee you, you are sitting on a time bomb. Because according to the law of time and chance, according to the law of life, sooner or later, even if you are Jesus, you may not be able to carry the cross alone. Powerful Jesus needed men to help him. It is foolishness to believe that for the rest of your life, you will not need any man. No. Hallelujah investing in relationships may look costly you will bend over backwards it will sting your ego but the profit that comes from that investment is unbelievable do you know that there are people who do not exactly have work but they are never broke because they are around strategic relationships they greet they hang around when the meeting is happening they are standing outside their job is to just support are you tired okay just bribe me orange quickly and they run and you will think that they are wasting time except that when it's time to share everything even if it's the crumbs from the table it will get to them one day someone will just look at them and say you've been very effective come and take this car and that's it come and take this house and that's it 
don't expect people to pay attention to you when you have not communicated honor and you have not in listen every man's need is his point of contact learn this every man's need is his point of contact if i am thirsty the person who brings me water is the person i pay attention to for that moment are we together many believers do not invest in strategic relationships and then they want astronomical returns for nothing is fraud are we together that means god loves everybody but you don't invest in your relationship with him i'm using god since it's universal you don't invest in your relationship in worship in prayer in word study and then you suddenly want to have the same ministerial opportunities the same access to the great it does not work that way time is the seed for intimacy when you sow time you get back a harvest of intimacy it's only a foolish person who will bring everybody into your home your inner chamber watch this now in many houses you have you know maybe the veranda outside you have the living room maybe a number of the living rooms and there are private parlors you have bedrooms there are people who if they come they are going to wait outside you don't hate them but that is the level of the relationship they have not made the kind of investment you you suspect that it will be a risk to expose them to your living room there are others who may come and you can leave them there but do you know there are people who can even come to your house and while you are in your kitchen they can enter your room is that true and sit on the bed and be talking to you and you are not afraid because of the depth of relationship i ask you one more time who in your life have you invested so much in them that they look at you and say over my dead body that they hear that this person's house just went down it was raised down by fire and they say while we are discussing where you will be i've paid for a house for you a three-bedroom flat relocate with your family and stay there before we know what is done i'm praying for you that this wisdom key will work in your life I'm praying for you that in the name of Jesus, you will not make the mistake that those who have gone ahead of you have made. Are we together? The absence of strategic relationships. I have no man to speak for me. I am skilled. I am gifted. I'm an IT consultant. I am gifted. I can do this. I'm a real estate, um, you know, expert. I am this and that, but there is no man to speak for me. There is someone who can speak for you everywhere. You must have the discernment to know them and you must have the, the, the humility to invest in their lives. The Bible says, give a portion to seven and then to eight it says for you do not know the evil that will come upon the world in other words scatter your human relations investment you do not know who can be used by god to help you are we together one day you'll see a weak woman that may not seem to have any power but you'll be surprised the kind of people who honor her and she can call someone and say please can you make this man a director mama do you trust him yes and that's it no interview no nothing number five are we learning the fifth reason why people are poor especially believers is bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment or the absence for an easy expression of spiritual empowerment many have not learned that there is a spiritual dimension to genuine lasting wealth there is a spiritual dimension, I repeat, to genuine lasting wealth. It is called the power to prosper. Deuteronomy chapter 8 and verse 18. The Bible says, but thou shall remember the Lord your God, for it is he that giveth thee the power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he swore unto your fathers as it is this day. God can give men power to prosper. God can give men power to prosper. 
and many have rejected that grace many have rejected that impartation there is an anointing that comes upon a man that primes your mind in an unusual way to think coming up with witty inventions and ideas that anointing translates to favor attracting people attracting circumstances attracting opportunities the bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment and I'm happy you came to church tonight because you will not live without that grace in the name of Jesus I repeat that you will not live without that grace that that grace will come upon you the same way the Holy Ghost came upon Jesus it will mantle you that when you leave this place you will be able to define the kinds of anointings that are on your head in the name of Jesus can I give you the remaining two? Number six, the sixth reason why people are poor and remain poor and sadly may remain poor is impatience. The sixth impatience, Proverbs 13, 11. Impatience. Let's read together. One, two, read. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished the bible says but he that gathered by labor shall increase let's read one more time wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished but he that gathered by labor one of the major reasons why people become poor is they want to become rich fast god gives speed but he does not rush men there is a difference between rushing and speed are we together the difference between rushing and speed is the same difference between throwing a thing up and allowing it grow when you throw a stone up or you throw a plant up imagine that i hold this flower now or a, a plant and i throw it up because i want it to be tall fast will it come down absolutely but if i water it and allow it to grow what happens that growth remains sustained and it remains sustained because it is connected to source there are many people who want to become rich overnight and don't get me wrong God can bless people and turn your your morning to to rejoicing overnight after an extended period of training it is the manifestation that is overnight not the training please listen when you hear somebody tells you i got blessed overnight find out the training process for instance the holy ghost came suddenly but the training was not suddenly three and a half years of training for a sudden manifestation of the spirit so you find someone in the school of wealth in the school of the spirit the school of kingdom prosperity for a long time and overnight god opens the doors but i assure you I'm, I'm speaking especially to my generation because we have an obsession. The moment it looks like you want things to happen very fast and many of us have mismanaged what God has given us and brought ourselves to perpetual penury. Do you know that the pressure to get rich fast can be an addiction? Look up please. The same way you can be addicted, uh, taking, a, you know, drugs cocaine and all these kinds of things there are people who are addicted no matter what god gives them they want to see how they can make it fast and some is because of pressure because we use physical things around to define the presence of faith so if i see a jeep if i see a duplex some mansion somewhere i see you flashing designers all through most likely you have faith i have taught you it is not accurate serious people don't think like that are we together impatience say in the name of jesus i destroy the spirit of impatience yes sir and jesus increase Luke 2 52 he grew he increased in wisdom he increased in stature he increased in favor with God and with men this is true for ministry this is true for business this is true for leadership this is true for personal finance there is the law of process as powerful watch this as powerful as the word incarnate was 
when he entered the womb of Mary, you would think Jesus should develop in one week. After all, the father wants, you know, believers to be saved. Mary had to go through the natural cause, is that true, of carrying a baby. When Elisha prophesied to the woman in Shunem, he said, according to the time of life. There are things that when God wants to help you, he will grant you patience to endure. He will not necessarily fast track the process. Because there are things, the lesson you learn on the journey is greater than what you obtain. In fact, it is what maintains what you obtain. So the Bible says, wealth that is gotten by vanity. Unfortunately, there are many people today who are wealthy. They cannot defend their wealth because it did not come by growth. So they mismanage it. You find young people mismanaging their parents' wealth and inheritance in one year, two years, you find out that, uh, you know, a wealth estate that was built over 20, 30, 40 years diminishes in less than two years because they handed it over to children who did not have the mental constructs to maintain it. Please refer to my message, Redefining Inheritance. Listen to it very carefully redefining inheritance i teach there that there are five kinds of inheritance that every father every leader every superior must transfer to those who are coming and if you don't you have destroyed the generation coming money and physical things is the least and the fifth of that inheritance the first and the highest inheritance you can give any man is your convictions your convictions is transferable. That is what made you you. Now, in, in Africa, we believe that loving children means giving them access to anything, anyhow, when they want, without training. After all, is my child. So we do not have third, fourth, fifth generation. There are very few regions in Africa and Nigeria that can perpetuate wealth. Because you have a lot of young people who are careless, they just tumbled into millions and billions and they waste their parents' estates. There are people who, when the owners, the people who started that wealth journey, as soon as they die, the, the entire wealth does not even reach two years. Imagine if the prodigal's father, the prodigal son's father, handed over his entire estate to that foolish boy. He, he, still, he still would have finished, I hope you know that. I'm not calling him foolish as an insult. It's a description. He was foolish. Look at the things that he did. As soon as he got the money, he ran away. He lost relationship with the father. There is no record of him contacting the father to say, how are you? I'm away, but just to let you know you are still my father and I appreciate you. You see that? He left and there were wicked friends that were waiting for him already. And they started spending the money question where were the friends when he was with the pigs there are friends called friends for food i resist them from coming to your life yeah. what are they called friends for food as soon as it arrives here they come as soon as the contract arrives here they come you know i pray for you you will be surprised i just did not tell you but i know i know that it if not for my prayer you will not get that contract and then they now say oh they hear a siren and say police are they, what are they coming here for on their way going the bible says a friend is made for adversity a friend that cannot stand with you through is not a friend indeed is someone learning Unfortunately, some of us, those are the kinds of friends we like because they have mastered the art of singing your praises. They sing you to penury. You are lazy, they still clap for you. You are unserious, they still clap for you. Prayerless, they still clap for you. So impatience. I pray that you will have the grace to be patient. In the name of Jesus Christ. The grace to be patient isn't it incredible that most times it's people who do not have money that have over bloated demands of what life should deliver immediately if god allowed us to read some of the prayer requests yeah, i'm sure some of them i will run away first you know how moses ran away from that that serpent 
because you will be surprised someone who may not have anything will just write these are my prayer requests number one an suv 100 million a house somewhere in maitama or a socorro 300 million or 1 billion god you can do it and the person who is you see god is just looking angels too are looking you know the spirits of just men everybody's looking what kind of a believer is this yes sir are we together same patience please shout it same patience listen if you wear tomorrow's cloth today you walk naked tomorrow if you eat tomorrow's food today hunger would disgrace you you can move gradually with gallancy and make up your mind that when you leave a realm you've left it forever don't let impatience take you somewhere you are not supposed to be you don't have the money yet you are flying business class everything is shouting wrong wrong as you are seated there your clothes your attitude is saying you are not supposed to be here at this time it's not an insult because you do not listen if you get there by growth you should have learned the protocol of maintaining that place are we together now you go and pay for an expensive hotel simply because a breakthrough came you don't know how to open the door that is there you don't know how to use the toilet that is there you don't know how to do anything you just stand there and everybody thinks you are enjoying you are stranded in that room because your level should not have brought you there now while you are laughing i want you to pay attention it's just an example i'm giving i rather walk with jesus patiently this is even true for ministry there are projects that many there is a difference between faith and foolishness let me tell you process builds capacity there are things i would never do if god has not built me i'm not ashamed to move gradually after all the mission is him are we together there are people who have come up with over bloated projects and right now they are in debt finances is not the devil you just get up from one small room and you want a duplex overnight question can you maintain it you buy a car of 100 million from you know entering public transport do you have about 10 percent to 15 percent of the value of that car because any car you buy you must have a cash flow that can afford between 10 to 15 percent the value of that car for its maintenance are we together yes sir there are meetings you should politely reject because those who will be there will put pressure on you are we together now yes you should just polite as a way of not disgracing yourself you may be invited for courtesy's sake but they invite you and everybody there in hope that you will spend money and since you know that you may not have them just politely impatience the church of the lord jesus christ let us obtain grace to be patient the bible says follow them who through faith and patience faith and patience faith and patience don't go around claiming you are going to raise dead bodies you just started ministry you just had an encounter you got born again six months ago yes you are praying every day but it takes time the day a real spirit will appear to you that is the day you will know what happened to the sons of Skiva. you know most people just talk you just go and gather a whole family that has generational causes and you just now you're a believer in christ yes but remember i taught them in zaria that believers must be trained to come into maturity are we together even the disciples while they were being mentored by jesus jesus there were some things they could not do hallelujah you hear that there's an expensive fundraising going on somewhere you just go and find yourself there and they keep you in front you don't know the meaning of being of sitting in front there at the fundraising because if you if you grew into that realm you would have learned what that meant now they clap for you while you were coming and you didn't even know what that meant they now said okay it's time and they've handed the mic to you out of pressure you say well on behalf of me and my company i donate 10 million and the people sit there those who know you are surprised 10 million are you going to sell your family where are you going to raise that money from 
Listen, let me submit to you. Listen to me. Please listen. Love but listen. That also includes coming out to make pledges in church. I am not against giving. But let me tell you, there are many foolish coming out to make pledges that wisdom is saying go back because you are putting your family in trouble. There are certain levels of giving you should discuss with your spouse as a responsible man. This, don't just sit down and everybody is happy and you just stand up as a man and you just come and stand. What are you donating? You say my house. Your wife sits down there shocked. You are donating your house? All because of pressure. I deliver you from it in the name of Jesus. Can I tell you, when Koinonia started, listen, when Koinonia started with a crowd of people, and even though I had the ability to buy at that level whatever car I wanted, I would still, I, I had a bike. It was, it was bike that would carry me. Miracle service. I would dress, then I used to wear a lot of suits. You know, you wear that and then you see me with my Bible and you are hearing a bike, you think they are dropping someone. It's Joshua Selman that has arrived. Did it, question, did it stop the sick from being healed? You see, when people know you are honest and serious, they will support your growth. Well, when people know that you are a liar, they will do everything to make sure you learn the lesson. Impatience. Let me give us the last. Laziness. It's as simple as that. Laziness. Laziness. Proverbs 20 and verse 4. Jesus. Freedom from financial captivity. Let's read verse 4. One to read. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore shall he beg in harvest and have nothing. Let's read one more time. The sluggard will not plow by reason of the cold. Therefore he shall beg in harvest. You know the meaning of this? That means the person will say, well, honestly, um, Abuja is too hot. Abuja is too cold. Are we together? There's terrorists, there's, there, there, there's terrorism, there's kidnapping everywhere. I can't risk my life. No. It should not be. The Bible says he will beg in harvest. Hallelujah. Now, can I give you five keys very quickly? Remember, it's a prophetic service. When we'll be doing finance proper as a series, we'll take time and go in depth and deal with certain things. But my focus is on poverty today. I have listed, maybe I should do a recap. I always like to recap so that those who are slow would follow. Number one, ignorance and incomplete knowledge of God's financial system. The factors responsible for poverty. Two, the absence of value that is needed and useful. Number three, lack of productivity and excellence. Four, the absence of strategic relationships. And I told you to note that because it is a major factor that can define your wealth or poverty. Five, bankruptcy of spiritual empowerment. Six, impatience. Seven, laziness. There are many young people in our world today who are lazy. An old man of 60, 70 years is sitting outside in the morning. A young man is also joining him to sit down outside. Are we together? Yes. It ought not to be so. When a young man stretches himself, you will not die. Listen, especially for our gentlemen in this ministry, in the name of Jesus, the Son of the living God, every spirit of laziness, it doesn't matter where it came from, and it doesn't matter how long it has stayed, in this service be delivered forever. My concern is everybody, but particularly the gentlemen. Don't sit down and say there's nothing to do. Stand up. Go, if you don't have a job, go and seek counsel somewhere. At least invest your day properly. Don't sit back watching movies, watching football. Allocate time for it, but know that your destiny is at its infancy. Are we together now? or hanging around other people who have certain leverage and then you are there you know parasitically speaking you are not even there to contribute you are hoping that one day you'll get something whereas you are not making the most of your life i detest laziness as a person 
and I can tell you lazy people will not go far. Lazy people will most likely be corrupt people. Lazy people will most likely want to do money ritual. And sincerely, both corruption and money ritual takes hard work. Do you know the creativity it takes to steal? That, that creativity can start a business. Money ritual. Because you will not go in the morning or afternoon. Most likely it's in the night. They risk wild animals before you get to the bush. That is the same courage you need to market your product and stand. Hello. Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. It says, My son, attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed we will tell you to share this message be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed and then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos we have loads of content that is going to make you blessed that is going to set you on course that is going to set you ablaze and don't forget to like for us. Thank you.